rate, CFM. Okay. There are low flow rates. There is a slight increase in pressure. As the CFM increase but a high flow rate flow rates, there is a rapid decrease in pressure as the flow rate increases. Okay. Now we're gonna talk about the, the speed changes. So that means as, as your fan increases speed, the CFM increase. As the CFM as the speed decrease, the CFM decrease too on the fan. And then the, you got more restriction, friction inside the duct, then your uh, CFM will, will reduce too. The speed changes. When the speed is increased, the fan will produce uh, more pressure at a given CFM or it will uh, deliver more air at the given pressure. When the speed is decreased, the fan will produce less uh, pr pressure at a given CFM or it will deliver less at a given pressure. Okay? Makes sense. Now, we talk about here the duct system uh, curve uh, categories, okay? In there, okay, duct system uh, curve combination of its component produce uh, resistance. Okay, categories and duct system components, okay, the components we got there are fan entrance and fan outlet fittings. Straight section of the duct, duct system fittings, devices that are uh, installed in the flow fan, okay, outlet and inlet. So those are the uh, parts that are hooked up to after the fan in which you produce a lot of resistance to the flow. The pack of the compa uh, components resistance. The more is component you have, the more resistance you're going to have in which it will lessen the amount of CFM in which uh, the final results on the CFM required is you will uh, uh, Reference it to the to the size of the fan that you're gonna you're gonna put in there. Effect of the balance. Another one here is that uh, effect on the resistance of the of the flow is that you get you might have a balanced dumper inside the duct. Causes a relatively small pressure drop when they are wide open. So that means when the uni when the the uh, when the balanced dumper is open. You got a pull flow and then less the resistance and then when it's uh, halfway done then you got a halfway resistance into that and when it's totally closed you got a lot of resistance in there. And then uh, <clears throat> you're going to talk about the uh, correction when you do, when you design the, the duct system you got to put consideration to the correction you got to make. Uh, for the different uh, situation that you might have, the the system might be in the high high altitude, just like in uh, Colorado, in which the atmospheric pressure is kind of thin or, or low, and then the the density of the air, you know, it 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 uh, it uh, involves into that. The one you're gonna correct, consider is the correction for uh, duct material. You gotta put consideration to the duct material that you gotta use. Okay. RTP, uh, altitude and temperature correction, duct performance non standard, fan performance non standard, operating point non standard, and then uh, correction for shape, and then you got hydraulic di diameter. Correction for the duct material, use the charts on the friction charts. Roughness and correction uh, factors must be considered, and then uh, you got the uh, duct. Uh, you use the duct slide rule to get the consider consent the uh, addition. You know the factors that uh, you must consider. There be there will be some numbers that you gotta consider to put in there to do your calculation, and then the altitude and temperature correction. Standard air density is a uh, at uh, 0 0.75 pounds per cubic foot and then 70 degrees Fahrenheit at sea level. Okay, that's the standard air density. Change in altitude 
and or temperature causes of changes in the air density and viscosity. Charts uh, is used for uh, correction purposes. Okay, you got a lot of charts and then uh, they got uh, uh, they're used for doing the correction purposes. Okay, then uh, the symbol that are used for standard condition you got STD and then correction uh, correction uh, condition you got the CORR and then altitude correction you got KA and then temperature correction you got KT that means you when you you look at those symbols in there that might on if you got a blueprint or something where you design that make sure once you see those you put those into consideration that you gotta look more deeper if there and then if where the correction was was added and done if there is any according to Osray no correction of, of non-standard air is uh, used than a 1500 feet air temperature between 40 degrees to 100 degrees par 110 degrees Fahrenheit Actual practice temperature between 0 degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit elevation connection uh, require when 2,000 feet above. Above, okay. The duct performance, then the standard, okay. Air density, no uh, effect on CFM. Air density influence fan performance and power. So that your air is, is dense, it, it, it got a density less than what it's supposed to, and then the fan will definitely will just will be pump less, pumping less or more, or depends. Okay, pressure correction. Pan pressure is uh, sensitive to changes in density. The pan pressure flow chart curve, the pan performance curve do the correction for changes in density. When uh, you go there, either you operating the fan, or you are an engineer. You, you if you got a problem with the fan, just try to check the the fan performance curve. If it's when it's pumping air, must have corresponds to the speed of the motor. At certain speed, it must have a corresponding CFM. If the CFM is not right, sometimes it will start the building, meaning it start with air. Even though you see it's turning, but it's not the right RPM or the motor and stuff. And then keep keep uh, all try to learn that uh, performance curve of the fan. That's very very important. Pressure correction is equals to pressure standard time is Ka plus Kt. The pressure correction is will be pressure standard plus Ka plus. KT. And then you got pan power correction. Pan power correction must be along, must be done because of air density. That means the power, pan power correction. Okay, you use that to, to do if the density of the air changes. The pan power changes uh, properties, proper, uh, uh, the fan power changes proportional to the density of the air. Correction. Brake horse power's correction is equals to brake horse power standard times Ka plus Kt. Operating point. Non standard air fan curve uh, duct system curve must be both adjusted for the influ uh, influence of non standard and standard air can be accomplished by using altitude and temperature correction factor to adjust fan pressure flow uh, duct pressure flow okay operating point to uh, equal temperature when operating temperature in fan and duct are equal the non-standard air operating fan point CFM will be approximately equal to the standard air. Okay. Operating point at a different temperature. Okay. 
operating point at different temperature. Now we're going to talk about correction per se. Friction charts and duct slide rules are designed to show the uh, relationship between CFM, friction, duct size, and velocity per round up. Round duct do not have a same relationship with square, rectangular, and oval duct. And both duct carry the same CFM, and what both duct at the same cross section area, then none round duct will have a, a, a large friction rate than the round duct. Equivalent size based on friction rate. For rectangular duct, diameter is equals 1.3 times W X times is uh, the height divided by W times is the height. Well, let me repeat it. Diameter is equals 1.3 times W H W times H to the 0.625 pi power over W times H over to the 0 0.0250 horsepower. Diameter is equals to round. W is equals to rectangular width in inches, height equals to rectangular height at inches. Okay, and then uh, you got the hydraulic velocity. Hydraulic diameter equals to four times cross section, uh, shunnel area divided by the perimeter. Hydraulic diameter concept is uh, useful for estimating the friction for ducts that have an uh, usual shape. This can be uh, accomplished by uh, Circular area of non-round duct. Calculate the area of a non-round duct. Calculate the the velocity of the non-round duct. Calculate the hydraulic diameter of the non-round duct. Okay, uh, that's all the lecture that I got. I hope so. You guys will be uh, will be uh, learning a little bit about my lecture and I thank you for watching my video and then uh, I'll bring more information as much as I can as best as I can and then uh, I use this uh, lecture as you uh, as a for a lecture to help you people and that the intention is not uh, to uh, for you to use it on my on your final decision to Use it as a reference for your the design and uh, and uh, making a final printing on what the, what plan you you have. I'm just doing this for educational purposes. So uh, don't. Okay, that's it. That's all I got. And then I'll thank you again. And then now, if this video is okay and then you love it, but definitely I'm gonna make the next uh, video of the section. Uh, the next section we're gonna have will be discussing about all the friction losses in the inside the duct what are the equipment okay thank you very much good day